<laughs> All right, uh, moving on. Let, let's let's talk about one um, talking point from your podcast. Now, uh, oh. from, from from the first uh, episode, the one with uh, Sunday Ulisse. Now, you know, one of the talking points from that podcast was when he uh, talked about uh, Mikael and Indidi. Uh, uh, I'm sure you've been seeing, you know, the, the, <laughs> the, the talk going on now. Now let's let's do this for for the channel, for not for Atlas. Now I know you're very much a big part of Atlas. Now let's do this for. I'm a shareholder. Yeah, <laughs> it's my it, company. It, Atlas it, is my company. Exactly. So l- let's let's do this now for for the Elegbeta TV channel now. Okay. Um, Mikhail Obi, uh, I don't I don't know. You must have done it, but I don't think I've heard you, you know, spoken so much about Mikhail Obi. Uh, like I said, I might have missed it, but I mean, where would you put Mikel Obi? Where would you rank Mikel Obi amongst, uh, uh, you know, Nigerian midfielders? You know, Sunday will say he came out to say that he's a player who's done good with Chelsea, but when you talk about playing as an offensive midfielder, he's not an offensive midfielder. My man here knows, you know, was talking about, you know, how he says things. I mean, will say have, he's, he's one of those blunt, you know, speaking guy. Nigerian footballers. You know, he said offensive midfielders have certain qualities, and Mikel doesn't have any of them as regards as a defensive midfielder i think he's useful but i won't play him i'll play in dd because a defensive midfielder's work is you have to win balls without making fouls you have to be very good in area balls you have to have control by helping others now this comment sparked a lot of uh, debates and uh, you know opinions online now what would you have to say regarding those where would you rank first of where would you rank Mikel amongst nigerians midfielders and that uh, you know positionally there's this talk that is if not for Mourinho, he wouldn't have been a defensive midfielder. He's always offensive and, you know, and all that. So, where would you rank him amongst Nigerian midfielders? And do you agree with Olise's comment? On Before anybody surprise? judge us, let's bring the Olise conversation into the mix and uh, break it down the best way that we can break it down so that nobody say, oh, they, 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 they formulate the word themselves. Okay? Let's bring the Olise conversation into the mix. Yeah. I read the game very well. But then there's a player that I also came to fall in love with as a Nigerian, Mikel Obi. Yeah. Played 2001 at under-17. It was a sparking light. We lost after a toss of coin. 2005, it was a shining star. Yeah. On the same pedestal with Messi. But then went to Chelsea and became a defensive midfielder. Mm. But then for Nigeria, it's an offensive midfielder. How does that fly? That's, you know move interchanging opposition conflict with the player's mindset when he's playing as a coach what do you have to say about Mikel Obi and his style of play well he's a player who's um, done some good good with Chelsea but when you're talking about playing Masse, he's not an offensive midfielder yeah an offensive midfielder is well my man here knows me well he knows me well enough that I'm blunt to say the things when it comes to it offensive midfielder has certain qualities he doesn't have any of it so you can be, you, you can be an offensive midfielder, and um, f- um, but as you got defensive midfielder, I think he's useful, but I wouldn't play him. You Why know? would you play Mikel Obi? I wouldn't play him. I would play him, did he? Because a defensive midfielder's work is you have to win balls without making fouls. You have to win, you have to be able to be very good in aerial balls. You have to be a player that is you have to have some control. You have to help others, you know, you know. And the thing that was, I, when I call you Super Eagles. I invited the man. There were a lot of controversy, you know. You know, and it's easy when you are somebody that's principled, instead of saying that's your decision, they try to link it to controversy. I invited the man to play with the Super Eagles. He didn't want to play. So I was like, okay, we'll, we'll find another option, you know. He was not the only one. But at the time, Nigerians, you know, you know our press now, they all, out of the fact that there was one particular time, like I said in my book, I was loved by Nigerian press until 2001, and I said, no, 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 no. You can't be attacking my teammates, killing everybody in newspaper, cleaning us tired legs. You know, eh? now the team decides. You don't come into the dressing room anymore. Ah, oh, he's this, he's arrogant. But then, that is how I say it. I will. Uh, so, so, what's the question out of that? So, where would you rank Mikel amongst Nigerians midfielders? And uh, do you agree uh, with the. Uh, Mikel in Didi thing. Would you play in Didi above Mikel? And you know, positionally, where do you think Mikel is best? You know, just just summarize uh, the whole as, debate. And as situation. a defensive, and before you continue, Olise is within his right to say that because he's, he's played the game. He's a midfielder, you know, legend for the Super Eagles. So, uh, so as a as a defensive midfielder, I'll 
pick in the way ahead of uh, Mikel Obi. Now, that, this is not to negate what Mikel Obi have done because so the midfielders, in, in, in my course of following football, midfielders are different. Edgar Davis is not Ungolo Kante. Neither is Ungolo Kante Makalele. Neither is Makalele Makalesian. Neither is Makalesian Fernando Redondo. Neither is Fernando Redondo Sergio Busque or Sergio Busque is not even a clone of Pep Guardiola. Neither are any of these ones Sunday Ulisse. And one one other great guy, Macha Macha Sama. Is it no? Sama is this? Is it Macha Macha Matos? Then Sama Sama something. Sama the former coach of Dortmund, but he played for Borussia Dortmund and helped them to win the UEFA Champions League. These guys played in play different style, different roles. Defensive midfield are picking the D ahead of Mikel Obi. But I would still play Mikel Obi. Now, let me let me shock you. But Mikel played me, majority of his career as a defensive midfielder. Yeah, Chelsea. for Chelsea, yeah. But in the Super Eagles of Nigeria, I would still rate Mikel... And this is the one that everybody will kill me for. I would still rate Mikel Obi above Austin J.J. Okocha. Now, let me, let me clarify that. Talent-wise, there is nobody that matches maybe Eti Messing and then Mudalawa. There's nobody that matches Austin JJ Okocha talent wise. Usage of that talent to the for the good of the team. I don't see Okocha ahead of Mikel Obi. So Okocha played with this great generation of players who were good, fantastic, so makes the job easy, gets the job done. Mikel Obi also didn't play too much with a great generation of players. Every time, every team he played with from when he got introduced into the national team somewhere was a patch patch. You know, some players are trying to retire. Some player, the team, the team had not been good. The federation, the, you know, there's so much problem. But it wasn't like that bunch of great generation of players. Like, let me use LeBron James as an example. So, Mikel Obi is LeBron James. LeBron James have won four rings in the NBA. Every time he's won those four rings, the team all came together came together to do it when he was at Cleveland cavaliers and he won it in 2016 it was because not just him yes he's going to be the center of attention but the rest of the people can love i mean everybody showed up to make it happen when he went to miami he to win it again Dwayne Wade was unplayable everybody in that team uh what's it called everybody was great rondo and the rest when he came to early first season rubbish Again, this season, don't forget they didn't go to the playoff. But when they won the ring, you could see uh, uh, AJ, Rondo, himself, everybody came to the party once again. And once that happens, you will see him be at his best. But because he played in a team where they were pitch, patch patch, you can't compare the 2013 Super Eagles with the 1994 Super Eagles in terms of quality of players, caliber of players, standard of players. But Okocha won the Nations Cup there. Mikel Obi won the Nations Cup, yeah. Uh, Olympics, he didn't go to the, the, the one in 2008, but he went to 2016. I see more Mikel contribution in 2016, bronze medal winning team, than Okocha's contribution in 1996. So, I'm, it seems like I'm turning this into Mikel versus, versus Okocha. Okocha. No, I'm just trying to explain my pick. Now, that said, you look at the history of Nigerian midfielder. Uh, 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 well, Mikel Obi is the only one who have managed to play both as a defensive midfielder and as an offensive midfielder. So in that regard, it's going to be almost impossible for me to knock him off. Does that mean I don't respect what Ulisse is saying? Ulisse speaks like me. Ulisse sees the game like I do, or even way better than I do. So what he is saying from the context of the discussion was if he had to pick the best in these positions, He's not going to pick Mikel Obi. Obviously, Mikel Obi is not the best, in, best defensive midfielder out there that you will pick. He's also not the best offensive midfielder out there that you pick. But now, put at the ladder. If I'm picking uh, midfielders in Nigeria, it would be unfair to box all of them together because the defensive midfielders are different from the offensive midfielders. So, you put the offensive midfielders in a group and say, okay, so I start with Mudalawa. Up there. It's my number one. And then I'll look for, I don't know, somebody else. It's a name that I'm trying to remember and I'm forgetting. And then I'll now pick uh, maybe Okocha as number four because there's going to be Mikel Obi number three and then maybe Okocha number four and, you know, just like that. This is, remember, this is my pick. Disagreeing 
this does not call for disagreeing this calls for you as anybody out there make your pick and put whoever you want to put in your number one but i cannot discard michael obi completely because i saw this guy pulling some great performance hold on to the ball watch him play at chelsea watch him play for the super eagles help the team to find goals when goals were not coming in putting the ball it's just that sometimes the kind of person that he is and that's also what this defines ulisse until we did this podcast a lot of people say ulisse is rude arrogant this one that one you know why in nigeria i suffer that same fit do you know that nigeria if you are time conscious you are arrogant if you're principled you are arrogant if you're not ready to play ball if you're not ready to dance to the tune of the people your organization uh niger football face that the first thing that people will do is do not accuse you and you don't collect money yeah so once they try to use that one to rubbish you maybe if it doesn't stick they not say he's rude he's arrogant he's pompous he's full of himself so all of those things should be removed and be objective about the game of the the, the game that people play i don't have to be humble to be a good footballer i can be rude like zlatan Ibrahimovic, but you cannot deny the fact that i'm a fantastic goal scorer when it comes to goal scoring so those are some of the things we need to look at on the whole i mean my all-time greatest nigerian football uh, player is sondo lise greatest defensive midfielder that i've ever seen play the game for the national team is sondo lise followed by moses Paco. a lot of people of this generation don't know who moses Paco is anyway so you you push it there then you put in the somewhere don't forget that nigeria as a country it's not brazil germany spain france england we've not had great succession of players let's 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 all accept that we've not had great you know generation of players that oh this great this players like in brazil there are too many rank and file of players you have to look up to in nigeria the search starts and ends with class of 94. people don't even remember if adokia mesemaka played football or shego degwam played football or there was a mudalawa or there's a iduo tobosi or people don't even know the late um taiwan gunjobi was a footballer they only know him as an administrator so all of this because we have poor history that's where athletes actually come in that's what we're doing we're trying to bring back the history remind people of people who kick this game who played this ball what they did how they did it if we can get clip we get clip if we cannot but we'll talk about it so that you will know what these people really did because somewhere in the stands in the in line in our national team says the labor of a hero's past shall never be in vain but in this country it is already in vain so we need to have that conversation i will knock him off completely but hey you know, you know, this this is one this is one thing. Um, as a defensive midfielder, looking at what Miss Mikel did for Chelsea, yeah, and looking at the current in DD, would you who would you who would you prefer? Now, you know, remember Mikel amongst you know when there was Lampard, SCN, you know, at Chelsea, and uh, maybe in might just need to move to a bigger club to show you can cut it at a bigger club because I mean Mikel played for Chelsea. You know, won laurels, won Champions League amongst other great midfielders as well. He wasn't benched; he was being he was playing games. And you know, do you, do you think that's one factor? You know, looking at, at, at both players at the moment, but as a defensive midfielder, looking at what Mikel did for Chelsea and the current Wilfred in Didi you're seeing today, as a defensive midfielder, who, who would you? If prefer? that if, if that's the question, is Mikel straight up? Because the question was a national team. The first question was for the national yeah, team. Yeah, I'm just trying to shift the. the now, if you shift that conversation, the, the what I will tell you is this: in Didi does not walk into that starting lineup of that Chelsea. This in Didi will not pick a jersey in that in that Chelsea team. Mm. This in the, this with Freddie Didi. It doesn't mean he's not good, but I don't see him. I don't see him. That's we're in the transfer window right now. Nobody's mentioning his name. We've had like two, three, four transfer windows and this guy have had in short with Freddie Didi was way, way fantastic when nobody knew about a guy called Frankie Kessie. Where's Frankie Kessie playing today? He's just signed for Barcelona. Played for a very poor, terrible AC Milan. Pushed them so hard that he gone on to win the league title. After that, now he just signed for Barcelona, right? Mikel Mikel Obi evolved with time in his game, and he adapted to different coaches. It wasn't just oh, but Jose Mourinho loved him and he played there. He played with different coaches in a club where the, the revolving gate was on fly speed, not even high speed, on fly speed. Okay, but. You look at Wilfred in the day. My problem, and I've always said that about him, he's a likable person. So you just see him and you go, oh, okay. it's like a puppy. Oh, you just love you. Oh, I love this puppy. Come, let me carry. You don't say that to your rotwala now. You can't say, oh, let me carry. You, 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 you're you, cautious, right? So Wilfred in the day is supposed to be a rotwala, but it's a rotwala that is caught up in being a puppy. So that's not, that's the part of him that I will look at him like, can I, do I have the audacity to say Wilfred in the day is not a good player? No. But, when you now bring it into the context of this your question 
Come pick me Kelo be way, way ahead of Fufredi Didi. You are listening to Elegbete TV Radio.